hello. Uh, my name is uh, Lorcan Dempsey. I'm here in the uh, OCLC library uh, with the new OCLC museum. Uh, going to talk to uh, Dave White and uh, Lynn Conaway about their project, uh, Visitors and Residents, What Motivates Engagement with the Digital Information Environment. Dave is from the Technology Assisted Lifelong Learning at the University of Oxford, and Lynn is uh, with uh, OCLC Research. So uh, we might start by asking, uh, what do you mean by visitors and residents? Yeah, well, I, I suppose what it comes from uh, originally is um, that uh, Mark Prensky put forward this idea of digital natives and digital immigrants, um, and that was about 11 years ago. And uh, we did some research at Oxford uh, a few years ago where we interviewed our um, lifelong learning students. And we discovered that the way that they decided to engage with the internet didn't seem to be predominantly um, informed by the, either their technological skills or by their age. And um, as a result of that, we came up with this sort of visitor and residence idea. So it's a continuum, you've got visitor at one end, resident at the other. The visitor, um, just to put it quickly, the visitor um, sees the web like a kind of um, toolbox um, where they'll decide what they want to do, they'll go online, they'll pick the tool they need to use, they'll use it, and then they'll put it back and they'll close the box. So they disappear, they're not visible. The resident, on the other hand, sees the web as a place where they, they, they kind of partially live out their life online. So they're likely to have a profile on a social networking site, and they see the web as somewhere they can express themselves, they can express their opinions. So that if you, if you like, the web's a place to them mm -hmm. um, where mm -hmm. they can reside. And we found that as uh, quite a useful continuum, quite a useful framework to help map how people are engaging with the web. The uh, project is um, uh, proceeding with OCLC involvement and uh, JISC is also uh, funding um, uh, your participation in the, in the UK. Do you want to say a little bit about what JISC's interest I is in this? For uh, JISC is an uh, organization in the UK which provides shared services for uh, education, and yep. uh, their interest in, in this work would be? Well, uh, uh, one of the things that JISC is looking at at the moment is the mm -hmm. idea of, of digital literacies and, and okay. how important that is for students and for staff mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. UK sort of higher education and further education. And I think what it is is the case that you know, the computing infrastructure is there, the network's mm -hmm. strong, mm -hmm. um, but people still need to know mm -hmm. how to go about using technology for their learning. They need okay. kind of advice. Um, that's changed very quickly. It wasn't that long ago that the library would be where you went to find your information mm -hmm. sources, mm -hmm. Wikipedia, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, JISC are very interested in what literacies already exist out there. Okay especially as for both staff and students, they don't necessarily need to develop literacies within the sort of confines of the institution formally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the internet is everywhere. Yeah. And so, and so um, I think what our project can do is, and what mm -hmm. we're discovering is those kind of literacies or practices mm -hmm. that people have got in a very broad way that, that goes beyond the edges of the institution. And if we can um, capture those, if we can get a sense of, of what those are, um, then it's going to help an organization like JISC to um, uh, facilitate people moving forward in those practices okay. rather than there being kind of institutional personal clash between those things. Okay. Lynn, would you like to say a little bit about how uh, your research led up to this collaboration? We were studying how people get information and we were looking at uh, individuals from, uh, from 12 years old up to adults. And when we were interviewing people, and also we had an online survey, we learned that the young people, especially the younger group, we looked at millennials, but especially those between um, 12 and 18 years old, the screen agers, they had some very different ideas and concepts about getting information. And what we thought about this a lot, and so we decided that we would look at age. But it wasn't just age that made the difference. There were many other variables that we felt needed to be explored. Um, several, several of them are context and situation, um, also perceptions, educational level. Uh, so we really thought we should continue to look at this, and that's when uh, I found out about Dave and his visitors and residents concept and we started to talk. Yeah, because I, I think that's interesting because 
you're talking about perhaps uh, a, 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 the younger folk, if you like, having a different approach to information seeking and the way that they engage. And uh, I suppose what's intriguing about that is that it's it's, it's like a, is it like a, it's kind of a more of a cultural thing than necessarily just their technological skills. It's kind of their their, their attitude, and th I think that's why we 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 talk about motivation to engage. Okay. Now, one of the interesting things you've said, Dave, is that um, with the visitor resident distinction, it's, it's not a distinction about people, one set of people being more effective users of mm -hmm. information or mm -hmm. uh, more effective learners. It, 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 would you like to say a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things that's quite intriguing about that, the idea, is um, I think um, if, if we go back to the natives and immigrants idea, then there was this sense that, that the immigrant would always be somehow more lowly than the, the native. In terms of visitor and residents, um, the resident appears to be on the surface much more technologically adept, mm -hmm. but whether they're better at learning using technology mm -hmm. is a completely separate mm -hmm. question. And one of the things that we've been finding, I, I think, is that um, a visitor approach where you're you're much more goal orientated and you can decide what you do before you go mm -hmm. online. So mm -hmm. much more instrumental in your use of technology. The visitor approach is, is quite often the more effective approach in terms of, of how it helps you with a formal education system. So if we imagine almost all formal education systems, you end up in an exam hall mm -hmm. on your own at a table mm -hmm. at the end of your course. And I can't imagine a more kind of visitor scenario where, mm -hmm. where, where it's, it's not necessarily discursive, it's not social, it's mm -hmm. not about who you are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, a visitor, somebody taking a visitor approach can be, can be brilliant at using technology for learning, even though they're not all over Facebook, they're not all over Twitter, mm -hmm. they don't have a huge network, mm -hmm. they're not very visible. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely not a kind of competency distinction. Okay. So the, uh, this collaborative um, project, uh, What Motivates Engagement with the Digital Information Environment, Visitors and Residents. Do you want to uh, say a little bit about um, um, what is being done in, in this project and uh, how, it's, how it's going to uh, unfold and how that relates to the, the visitor resident distinction that you're, you're making? Yes, yeah, so we started, um, we started this in phases. And uh, we've done the first phase, it's the pilot project. And we looked at four educational stages. And those are the um, emerging, the establishing, the embedding, and um, then the experiencing. And the, we started with the em emerging, which are uh, last year of high school or secondary school, and uh, first year of college, university. And we also have um, students in the U.S. and students in the U.K. So we have been interviewing students. Um, it's been a convenient sample. Uh, we've had to talk to, to students who are interested in talking to us. And, um, but it's been very interesting as we've been doing this. And we were forming a relationship with these students, or trying to. And we also asked them to complete diaries. And so every month, uh, we asked them to send us a diary explaining how they're getting information or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it does not necessarily have to be about academics. Uh, it can be personal. And even in our interviews, we talk to them about their personal information-seeking behaviors. Uh, it's been very interesting. We developed um, uh, a code book that emerged from these interviews. Uh, from there, we've just started interviewing uh, the next stage, um, which is um, the students in their third and fourth year of college university, which we call the establishing um, educational level. And um, we haven't really started with the embedded yet. Those are your graduate students. And we've skipped along to the experiencing, and we've started some of those interviews. And it's been um, very who interesting. The, who are the experiencing? And the experiencing mm -hmm. are the faculty, the scholars, the researchers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's been very interesting because when we look at the themes that came out of the um, younger mm -hmm. um, students and those earlier in their educational stages, there's some things that didn't come up, like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, with um, those who in their earlier stages. But it's very important to some of the faculty and researchers. 
so that, that's been interesting. Another very interesting thing was that librarians never came up in um, the um, first stage, the emerging stage. I did read a, a, a transcript yesterday and the, the young man kept saying, the woman who works in the library, the woman, and I said, oh, the librarian, and he said, no, the woman who works in the library, which I thought was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so we're moving along now. We're hoping then to follow, again, with diaries, these same um, individuals. We've, we've selected a small group, and um, six of each, and hope to follow them uh, through the next several years on a monthly basis. Uh, again, it's US, UK. Mm -hmm. So you will follow people through their educational yeah, we want to see. We want to see if we could. We're interested to see if the if their kind of literacies, if we use a very broad mm -hmm. term, kind of evolve over time, and mm -hmm. what's influencing that the, the, the kind of formation or or, or, mm -hmm. or, or the mm -hmm. the existence of those literacies, whether um, they they form their approaches early and just take them through their mm -hmm. educational career, mm -hmm. or whether they're influenced by the context they're in. So uh, you were talking about the idea that. Um, you know, if they're later in their educational career, then perhaps more of what they do to, is to do with forming a professional network. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. perhaps over time their, 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 their network grows and we're hoping to sort of see that uh, um, yeah. appear. Yeah. Um, in terms of, the, uh, of how we're using the visitor residence idea there, we can, we can map people's activities, map people's approaches to the continuum. And we can see if, if their trajectory through, the, you know, uh, or, or their position on the visitor resident continuum shifts depending mm -hmm. on what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So we're just experimenting with an idea where we put a vertical axis onto the, onto the visitor resident mm -hmm. uh, idea, which is personal and institutional, okay. to see whether the, the, their, the, their predominant learning activity uh, changes where that takes place on that map over time. What, what uh, <clears throat> can you? say what the personal institutional axis means, what's personal versus institutional? Well, I, I think what we're, what we're looking at here is, we, is what, what came out of the pilot phase was that there was this, this clear sense that there are certain approaches that come, that are, are they're being directed to take, they're being taught certain approaches mm -hmm. that, are, that come from their institutions, so their, their, their tutors or um, uh, library staff, whatever they <laughs> might think they're called. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but there's also a whole set of emerging practices which are, are entirely mm -hmm. outside of the institution. So they might be, uh, they might be, using these practices to get homework done, to get assignments done. But the actual practice itself is something that they've developed mm -hmm. entirely outside of advice from the mm -hmm. institution. So, and we really wanted to capture that because I think that the culture of the web and the opportunities for information seeking, for collaboration that the web brings. Mm -hmm. It's blurring the edge of educational insti institutions. Okay. We want to capture that. Is it too early to say whether there are UK, US differences? I think one of them was around Wikipedia. It was. Yeah, and around um, crowdsourced information sources, I don't know if you wanted to say. Yes, it seemed like uh, it was more US centered with this um, emerging uh, group that they would say, you know, our teachers tell us not to use Wikipedia mm -hmm. um, because people can change things and things aren't true. And then when we asked, well, do you use it? Oh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. um, and we use the links, but we don't tell anyone because if we do, one of the quotes was, the teacher will ridicule us. Uh, so they're, they're doing these workarounds. They're still using it, um, although they're being taught uh, not And I not think to. that that was, that was, uh, the the the, the um, how can I put it the skepticism towards mm -hmm. Wikipedia in terms of, from an institutional point of view seemed to be stronger in the U S than okay. in the U K and there was another interesting thing in the U S where they were told not to use dot com right yeah. because dot com is a comp is commercial yeah. so they're yeah. just trying to sell you something so you yeah. can't trust anything yeah. that you yeah. they say and again that distinction wasn't in the U K no it was not yeah. certainly I mean, I mean my children aren't allowed cite Wikipedia in homework. But, uh, but presumably they use they, it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Um, of course they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. um, are there any other, any other interesting themes that have emerged from the early stages of the, of um, the project? Well, Facebook. Um, Facebook's everywhere, as we know. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's very important to the emerging uh, mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. And it's when we created a Facebook page for the project, 
there's no activity. Mm -hmm. And when we probe and talk to them, they say, you know, basically we don't even want our parents on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. This is more social, this is our friends. However, it's a way of organizing our work Mm -hmm. And they'll say they, um, you know, I'll just try be trying to do my homework, mm -hmm. and I won't remember what to do, or I'll need help, and so I'll look on Facebook and see who's on, and then we'll we'll compare and talk and share information. So it is a personal rather than an institutional use, very much. Yeah, because where where you um, read about institutions sort of diving into mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. it, you know, the students quite often will back away mm -hmm. from that. I think mm -hmm. that's less the case when you get into the later educational okay. stages because okay. the personal and the institutional start to kind of collapse together okay. as, as more of your identity, yeah. Yeah. Uh, identity perhaps gets wrapped up. But there is a parents at the party feeling. Right. There is an aspect okay. to Yes, it. that okay. comes out. But and I, th I think one of the things that, that um, I was surprised at the, the, to the extent of which it was taking place was with the level of kind of residency in Facebook. So the students could quite safely assume that one of their peers or one of their mm -hmm. fellow students will be in Facebook mm -hmm. the night before an assignment. Mm -hmm. They're probably all in there because it's the night before mm -hmm. the assignment. Mm -hmm. And so they will literally just log on to Facebook and then start discussing the mm -hmm. assignment. One of the interesting factors in there is when they talk to us, they say that they discuss the, the nature of the assignment but don't do the assignment because they're really mm -hmm. nervous about what's the difference between okay. collaboration and plagiarism. Okay. So what they tell us is they say, what was the essay question, you know, and mm -hmm. those kind of areas. Mm -hmm. But any other, any other interesting uh, highlights? I, I, yes, the email aspect. Uh, we asked them to communicate with us with the diaries in any way they wanted. So mm -hmm. we could talk to them on the phone, Skype, chat, Facebook, email, and they all chose email. Yeah. And when we asked them why you chose mm -hmm. email, mm -hmm. they said because this is for um, administrative purposes. And, and I thought that was very interesting because when we were talking to screenagers three mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. they weren't as polite. Mm -hmm. They said because it's for old people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but these students have been much more polite. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm wondering whether that's because um, when you're in those early stages of your education, the, the way that you work can mm -hmm. be quite ephemeral. Okay. It, can, it, it doesn't matter. You don't need to capture that conversation. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go back. Mm -hmm. You start the assignment the night before. You do it. You hand it in. You f sort mm -hmm. of forget about it. Are there any differences um, across institutions in terms of um, this type of behavior? If some institutions are more active in promoting, reaching out, engaging. I mean, I think at this stage that's not something that we've looked at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm intrigued to know what's, as we get more data in and we analyze it, I think one of the things we're going to be looking for is, is what's more influ influential. Is it the institution or is it the discipline? Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that the, the kind of um, science, sciences versus the arts and the humanities might mm -hmm. well be something that, that is quite influential mm -hmm. in, in, in the way that people engage. You mentioned uh, LinkedIn. Any any other uh, social networking, research network type um, uh, uh, environments uh, discussed? Uh, we've just um, begun with mm -hmm. the scholars, okay. and LinkedIn was the one that really uh, came out that we okay. noticed. So uh, this project uh, began last February. Um, maybe you could say a little bit about. Uh, how it will um, uh, roll forward and, and, and what your plans for uh, future research are? We, um, as I said, we're going to interview um, uh, the other subjects within the, um, the educational phases. Uh, then we hope to have this extend over three years. And we are going to do an online survey uh, because we want it to be representative of these same four um, educational stages, both and subjects in the U.S. and U.K., because we do have small samples, and in order to generalize, we'll need to compare to a larger population. Uh, then in that third year, we're hoping to um, invite six more students from the emerging stage and ask them the same questions that we asked uh, two years prior, so that we can start doing some comparisons to see, you know, what 
what is affecting how they're using technology. Has the technology changed? Uh, is that the only thing? Um, and then we'll have those students who are in the emerging stage who have moved along to see are they still using the same technologies or have they begun to use different ones? And how are these embedded in their learning? Yeah, and, and, and I think it's going to be really interesting to sort of almost go back to the start again because we'll be able to see what, what's a significant factor? Is it, it because maybe the names of the technologies will have changed, but their actual approaches will be mm -hmm. identical, mm -hmm. or maybe their te their approaches will have evolved. It, I, it'll also be interesting to see whether the influence of the institution has changed, whether educational institutions have started to get more involved in um, teaching people how to um, you know, work with these kind of new literacies, or, or whether they're still as they are now, mm -hmm. perhaps slightly aloof. People will want to, uh, for people who want to know more about the project, uh, is there a place on the web they can go? Uh, yes, uh, they should Google uh, di uh, Digital Visitors and Residents, OCLC, JISC, and Oxford, and it should come up. And Dave is also blogging about it, so Dave? Yeah, the, the, there's a blog post around the, the project on uh, Technology Assisted Lifelong Learning's blog, again. Google works pretty good for that stuff, yes. yeah, so it's okay. very easy to find. Well, yeah. thank you very much, uh, Lynn Conaway and Dave White. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.